I had planned to go out and do some final tuning with my updated Shen drones thick today, but it's absolutely bucketing down out there, so that's not going to happen. So I thought I'd do a quick video to bring you up to date with what's been happening with this. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Buck channel. This is YouTube, you know what to do. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. When I first built this Shen Drones Thick last year, it was for a very specific filming project. And since then, it's done a lot of work. I've flown it a lot and it's been flown by a lot better pilots than me. But over the last two months, I've made some improvements and upgrades to this to fix some very particular problems that we noticed whilst we were filming. So first off, this has been upgraded on the back here to use the Matek M9N GPS module. This is the same as I used on the AOS 7 and it's performed flawlessly and it's on my high rise mount to keep it away from the power leads. We've gone up to eight inch props on here. These are HQ eight by fours. There's plenty of torque in these Brother Hobby Avenger 1300 kV motors to drive these and it gives me plenty of lifting power. It's fantastic. The only problem with eight inch props is price. So one of these props costs about the same as a set of four equivalent seven inch props. Quite expensive. Other changes that are made to the frame, there's now a new top plate on here to mount the camera. And this is mounted on these fantastic alpha gel dampers. These aren't cheap. They're about $5 each. So there's $20 worth on this particular top plate alone. The reason that you use alpha gel is that their damping performance doesn't change with temperature. So if you use something like silicon or TPU, when it goes cold, they change, they go harder basically. The other big change is the infinitely variable camera mount, as you can see here. It's a modified version of a standard Z mount. So just tweak that, tweak that. Infinitely adjustable. You can do what the hell you like. Now I have actually flown it like this just to see what happened. It's a bit wobbly, as you expect, but most of the time it sits there, but it means I can change it to any angle I want. The other change we've made is originally this was flying on the Lumix GH5 and after the first bit of filming we changed over to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K which has been great. It really is a much more suitable camera for doing this type of work. It doesn't have any built-in stabilisation which is exactly what you want. You do all your stabilisation in post and the image is fantastic. And the reason that you don't want to use a camera with in-body stabilisation is because even if you turn it off, the sensor is still soft mounted and it will keep wobbling around when you're flying. For image stabilisation in post, I was originally using the Stedxp gyro unit that bolts onto the top of here and they've got their own software. I'm now using an Insta360 Go 2, which we just mount on the bottom of the plate. And we use the gyro output from that as the source for gyro flow. And the footage off this is fantastic. And after a lot of testing with different lenses, basically settled on this Lauer 7.5 f2.0 prime lens. It really is fantastic. And it's very lightweight. It's about 175 grams and Lauer have just brought out a 150 gram version, which is even better. And it's a prime lens, no stabilization. Again, that's exactly what you need. And the field of view on this is 110 degrees, which is perfect. And importantly, it's a rectilinear lens. So any straight lines, vertical lines at the edge of your image, they stay straight. It's not like a GoPro. And then on the front of here, we've got an infinitely variable ND filter. This starts at ND2 and goes up to ND2000, so it's almost black, and it acts as a lens protector as well. And generally, when flying this, we'll put some bubble wrap around the back here just to protect the screen. And that's it, fantastic. 
At some stage, I will get around to publishing some footage on the channel. Most of the footage I can't publish for various reasons, but this is working very well. And I've also upgraded this to iNav 4.1 and those new filters in iNav have made an incredible difference and this is much smoother. Although I had to knock down the filter frequency down to about 80 hertz to cope with these bigger props, but it flies fantastically. Well there you go, quick update. As always, thanks for watching and if you found that useful, why not subscribe or maybe buy me a coffee to support the channel and I'll see you next time.